recently bought this iron worker. I got a really good deal on it. It's a Uni Hydro, was it 2466? 66-24. So it's a 66 ton, it'll shear 24 inches wide, and it's a fantastic machine for the amount of money I paid for it. I paid $3,500 for the thing, knew they're like 21 grand for a comparable model, and used they should be going for close to 10 grand. So it was a great deal, I couldn't say no. And I've also been doing a bunch of brackets for people. So I've been needing to punch hole or drill holes or punch holes. And this is way faster than drilling. Obviously punching is great. So, but it's, it takes a while to lay out the holes and find the center punch. So before I had the table, what I did, I need to make a bunch of these brackets with the three holes punched in them. I made a template that sort of went over the top and I could just sort of go along and punch all the holes. And that worked, but it's a little bit awkward getting this lined up and you're punching through two things and it's a little bit weird, uh, but it, it worked. Um, but I wanted something better and faster. I looked at getting the table that Uni Hydro sells, but it was just an L-shaped thing in clamps and just move it around, but it's like, how, how do you measure? Because it's hard measuring to the center of this punch. You don't have any reference point. It just seemed like a bit tedious and awkward to, to use. So I decided to come up with my own design. So I came up with this. These holes are quarter inch spacing along. So I can use two different things in the holes. I can use this round pin and drop that in, and that will get me, that's a whole inch, so it'll be three inches from the center. I have a pin that's slightly smaller. I put that in, that is three and an eighth from the center, or, you know, whatever. It's an eighth of an inch smaller in, in radius. And then to get up closer to the center, I made this bar, and one side is a plus, one side has a zero, so like that will be, the closest I get is half an inch plus an eighth, so it'd be five eighths of an inch away. Or if I flip it around, that is, sorry, that is one inch. No, half an inch on center. So half an inch on center away. So if I will go to one inch on center, just drop it in the holes. Then I also have this big bar in the back that can zigzag along, whichever set of holes it needs to go in. And also this bar can flip around and drop in the other way. And it's also labeled with a plus and a zero. So if I want to add an eighth of an inch, I can add an eighth of an inch. So this setup will give me an eighth of an inch accuracy for my holes, or an eighth of an inch resolution. It's not gonna be super accurate because things slop around a little bit, but they're punched holes with sheared ends. It's gonna be really by far close enough. Let's see. I do have a little apprentice mark here for cutting these out because the other thing about the Uni Hydros is they just have a circle here, which is easier, but then how do you change the dies? You have to take the table off to change the die. And now you're also probably wondering, well, how do I get the table aligned to the, the punch? Well, it's easy enough. I made this piece and there are two big holes in the back here that you can't see that these two drop into. I'll probably make them so they're not bolts and just make regular pins because the bolts are too long and unnecessary and just make things difficult. So I could just take longer bolts and cut them off. That would probably be the easiest thing to do. Uh, but anyways, this drops in here. That one goes in the middle. And that gets me referenced to the, to the center of the die. So that means that this table is set and locked in. So now if I wanted to do a hole that was um, let's make sure this set to zero, zero side. So if I want to go three inches by three inches. I could do that. And then 
that hole is three inches and three inches from the corner. I just punch a hole. Flip it around, get another one. So that's what I came up with for a table. I did do a video of me, some video of me making this, but it's really pretty tedious because there's a gazillion holes. I forget how many, but there's a ton of holes in here. I also scribe measurement lines along here, then along the back on this side also so you can get um, a reference. Let's see, what else? I need to f take this off and finish welding the little stands that hold it up off the table, but it should be a great addition to this thing. Oh, and you might be wondering why these corners are cut off. Well, the plate of steel that I initially started using had one corner cut off, so I decided that I'd cut the other corner off to match. Really, I'd probably trim the corners a little bit just so I don't have a big sharp thing sticking out, but I would not cut off this much if I was making this again. I would cut it off much smaller. Um, still could probably use a little bit of cleanup on the edges and whatever else, but it is perfectly functional right now. So even though I had probably a bunch of other spring projects which were more important than this, um, this sort of <laughs> piqued my interest and got me going. The holes I drilled, they're quarter inch holes or quarter inch clearance, so they're F drill holes. So it's what, 20, uh, 257 rather than 250. So they all worked. I did have to modify the, these, some of the holes stick a little bit, so I had to modify the pins. It is ground a little on each side. So it should keep the same distance up and down, or and out from there, but this makes it drop in a little bit easier. Um, if I was doing this again, I would probably buy a stub drill, a short drill, so walk less, maybe even a carbide one, um, just because there's a lot of holes in here, and getting them lined up um, doesn't matter so much for the table accuracy, but for these bars where the you got two fixed pins, you know, if you don't have your holes just right, they'll bind up. This will drop in. Yeah. Let's see what else about this. So, yeah, I mean, if, if somebody's going to make one of these, CNC would definitely be the way to go. I use my digital readout to drill, to line up all these holes, and it worked really well as far as a manual machine goes, but, you know, doing that sort of hole pattern. You know, it's just really slow compared to what a CNC could do. Cause you could just, it could just zigzag along and, you know, get them all just right. Um. So here's some footage of me actually making this and drilling the holes. I had it set up in the mill and on my rotary table so I could cut the circle for the, for the die holder to go through. And it... Really, my setup wasn't the best, but it was good enough. I didn't film a lot of the hole drilling for this because it would be tediously boring to watch. It was tediously boring to do, but I have my holes all laid out. So I'm going to make heads for these dowel pins. So when I put in a pin in there, it'll be two inches from the center. And I can make a bar that goes across here that I can zigzag down. So these holes are not mirrored. They're you know, things I would have done differently if I was doing this setup again. I would have drilled these two holes first and planned on having them line up with the T-slots underneath and mounted it down with those two holes. Because this setup is pretty janky over here. It's sturdy enough for drilling holes, but I also can't... This is going to be a slot. It's not just going to be a hole 
A hole would theoretically work. It's working now. Uh, but when I put it on the machine, I'd have to take this plate off to change dies because there's a set screw, well, right here. So this plate would get in the way. So I need to at least put a notch in it. I think I'll do a pretty big notch because this part of the table doesn't do much anyways. Um, let's see what else. I've got marks down the side here for inch marks. The short ones are, are half inch, little dots are quarters, those are inches, and they're mostly right. <laughs> well, they're in the right distance, but some of them are out of line. Got some good apprentice marks on it. I'll sign my name next to that one. That's out of place. Um, let's see, what else? Yeah, because everything was referenced off the center of this circle because that's where the punch goes down, so all this stuff off. And before, I just recently installed a digital readout on this machine, and I wanted it, I didn't really have this exact project in mind, but I knew that I might have to do something with a lot of holes in it, and it's, it's possible to do this with dials and laying out by hand, but by, Golly, it would be a lot of work. I did basically a whole bunch of, you can do a, a linear bolt pattern with my DRO. So I did a linear bolt pattern starting here with one inch offset. And I did a linear pattern starting here with half inch to do that row. Then a linear pattern starting here doing one inch again. So that gets me my zigzags. I did that for all the rows. And it was all referencing off the center point and I didn't get any cumulative error. Like if I just went here, then offset one inch, then offset one inch, then offset one inch, then offset one inch, you know, you could get cumulative error. It would still probably be close enough, but um, since this is a reference plate that I'm gonna measure off of, I want it to be as close as I can. But yeah, the digital readout was great. I got it from DRO Pros. I did think about putting this measuring scale in the middle but then it can only go up to here. It, it can't get past, so I decided to go for there because I'd be in the way of these guys. These two holes, I'm gonna make a plate with three pins sticking out. Two pins will go in here, then one pin will go into the center, the die. And so I'll be able to get this plate lined up perfectly to the die. I mean, they're gonna be punched holes, so there's gonna be <laughs> not going to be perfectly precise. So I guess I'm going to do the brave thing and break down the setup because I need other things.